today on an all-new Dr. Phil. My playboy has been filed for divorce, but would like to live with me. That is sick. Why are you waiting for him to tell you what you're going to do with your life? She doesn't want the divorce. Where do you draw the line, for better, for worse? Right here. But... Why'd you get married? She ended up getting pregnant. Wow. Okay. Did you not know that? How much? You found Dustin's profile on a cheater's website. You discovered an email with explicit images. Is she willing to take? You slept with that girl. That's an assumption. This is the ridiculous behavior, behavior that I am so I tired of. Then why are you still here? Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Okay, here's the deal, here's the deal. In a matter of weeks, these divorce papers will be finalized, and the marriage of Marcia to what she calls her narcissistic, alcoholic, playboy husband, Dustin, will be over. That is, unless things change today. Marcia says she has uncovered information that makes her sick to her stomach. Marcia claims Dustin was on a sugar daddy website looking for discretion with friends with benefits. But he was paying college girls thousands of dollars for unknown services. <laughs> if that wasn't enough, she claims he paid a ransom to prevent himself from being exposed in more ways than one. Now you would think after all of these allegations, Marcia would be hightailing it to the lawyer's office to end the marriage. But not exactly. These papers were not served by Marcia. They were served to Marcia. My alcoholic playboy husband walked away and filed for divorce after two and a half years of marriage. Marcia needs to accept that I want a divorce and she needs to move on. I don't love her anymore. Dustin's new take on our marriage is that he wants the divorce, but would like to live with me and co-parent our daughter. I've had a great time hanging out with you. Oh, yeah, let's be buddies. We're not? No. I woke up one day and realized the world that I knew didn't exist. I feel like I live in Dustin's world, full of lies and, unfortunately, other women. I'm not a womanizer. I haven't dated anybody. I have talked to people when I'm out because I'm a social person. I feel like I'm consumed with Dustin's actions because of his lying. I'm basically like a private investigator. Recently, I found emails to other women with graphic pictures in them. Being married to Marcia was really difficult because she wanted to control my every move. They had to take pictures to prove her. I'm not out many a times, just so she'll leave me alone. I do think that Dustin's an alcoholic. Dustin drinks daily, and he does deny that. I like to drink socially with my friends and hang out with my buddies. I laugh because Dustin plays the victim role a lot with me, but I feel that I'm the victim. I've never hated anyone, but Marcia makes me feel like I hate her. I thought we were trying to communicate. Yeah, it's, it's super fun when you lie. Crazy. What did I lie about? You lie about everything. I am emotionally and mentally exhausted. Marcia won't accept the divorce because it, it wasn't her idea. Okay, is that true? You don't accept this simply because it wasn't your idea? Absolutely not. That's Because uh, my question is, based on everything you've told us, everything you know, I am questioning why you're not hightailing it to the lawyer and serving him with divorce papers instead of him having to ser serve you with divorce papers. I understand that. I, I don't. I That's why I'm asking. Right, Explain right. to me. I go through that daily in my mind, but truly I've accepted alcoholism as a disease. And so to be molded into that and have to learn about that and go to Al-Anon and learn everything that comes with it, I've believed that Dustin's a sick so individual. So you think Dustin's an alcoholic? Absolutely. Or he, are he, you an alcoholic? No, I'm not. Do, I, do you drink? I drink socially. 
you're clear, you're, you're unambiguous here, you want out of this marriage. That is correct, yes. And you're just a matter of a few weeks away from this being signed off and completed, correct? That is correct, yes, sir. All right, and you've been married how long? We've been married, it would be three years, October 29th. Three years, October 29th. Why did you get married, by the way? Um, she ended up getting <clears throat> pregnant, and we ended up getting married. Wow. Okay. Okay. What, did you not know that? <laughs> Our daughter was planned. Dustin and I had multiple conversations about getting married and starting a family. We talked to our children about it. I went off birth control. We had doctor's appointments. So yeah, to hear him put it like that is a little insulting. We were actually not even dating when you told me you were pregnant because you broke you up were... with me prior to me finding out that I was pregnant. Okay, but now wait a minute. I I'm not endorsing e everything that you're doing inside this marriage sure. at all. And I, I don't think you endorse it either. No. But what I'm trying to do is understand the filter through which you're looking at this. He's saying, we got married because she got pregnant. And you said, no, no, we had planned to have a baby. We had gone yes. off birth control. We did all this. But subsequent to that, you broke up. I can't control his actions. He broke up with me a, a day before my doctor's appointment to confirm the pregnancy. Prior to that, we were planning a wedding, planning our engagement, starting our life together. I don't remember planning an engagement before you were pregnant. Ask our children. We might have talked about marriage in the future, but there was no plans of getting married in the immediate future. Okay. That's not true. Listen, I have a pretty good idea that I know what's wrong with him. <laughs> Probably do. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. We'll come back to that, okay? okay fair enough. But what I'm curious is what's wrong with, y with your perceptions? Because I, I just pulled out some things. This isn't everything, but right. uh, just the things that you've told us you know. Right. And I'm not, it doesn't even matter if she's right. You, you might dispute some of these things, but the important thing is what she believes to be true. All right, in March of 2017, you track. Dustin's phone to a female client's house. Correct. Where he stayed overnight. Yes, sir. Now, your response to that is you confronted Dustin. He denied, then admitted to staying overnight because he passed out. He said, nothing happened. I just passed out on the living room floor. Correct. And you believe that? Yes. Okay. Now, let's jump forward a few months to August of 2017. You found Dustin's profile on a cheater's website. Yes. Dustin was listed as looking for group dating, relationships, casual encounters, discreet affairs, and a kinky relationship. By this point, we had more of a roommate situation that we hadn't been intimate in a couple of years. Are you gonna sit here and lie like the entire time? What am I lying about, Marcia? The Everything first thing you, you put up said. there, if you actually met the customer that I slept on our couch, you would laugh at that statement. It's the couch now because it was the floor. It, it was the couch the entire time. That's not what she said. It was the couch the entire time. That's not what she said. This is exactly this what is I'm exactly. talking about. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop, exactly. stop, 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 stop. See, you want to argue this. It doesn't matter whether it was the You're couch right. or the floor. What right. matters is that you believe right. that he was being inappropriate and untrustworthy. Yes, you're right. Okay, and whether you were or not doesn't matter. That's what I, I preface this by saying. It doesn't matter whether you were over there wrapped up like a monk in a sheet. It doesn't matter. You believe what he was doing was inappropriate, right? Yes, absolutely. But your reaction to it's what I'm concerned about. Okay, then you find his profile on a cheater's website with all of these characteristics. I mean, here it is. I know. So yes. what's your reaction? You confronted, he admitted it, and deactivated it. Then January 18, we're jumping in a few months now, you discover on Dustin's phone that he had reactivated an old dating profile, created two new ones, looking for friends with benefits. Correct. You cried, you confronted him, argued, he apologized, and you entered counseling. Correct. You discovered via Dustin's phone and mobile banking app that he was being blackmailed over a picture, explicit picture sent to an adult website, paid a $257 ransom. 
to take the picture down. Your response to that was you were dumbfounded, confronted Dustin, who asked for a divorce. You were confused, questioned what you were doing wrong. You're dumbfounded, like this came out of the blue? Okay. Then we jump ahead a month. You discover transactions to adult websites on his mobile banking app dating back to February of 18. And your reaction now is you felt betrayed, confronted him, who ended the relationship and asked for a divorce. Marcia couldn't understand why he asked for a divorce. This is still up to him. That's just the first page. <laughs> These images that she found, I can't show to the audience. Those are of Dustin, and I know your body. I don't think these are of him. Of her sitting on him. What are you pretending not to know? And later, you hacked my cell phone. No, 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 Dr. Phil. It's, it's out of control. This is the ridiculous manipulative behavior. I said I was done over five months ago. Okay, I, I so get it. Of. I get it. Then why are you still here? Tomorrow, after Gary Busey. No, hey, two are over. His struggle with addiction. Whoa! Don't ever do cocaine. His near fatal accident. You underwent brain surgery, right? Split my skull up to here, knocked a hole in it that big. They don't know what his brain has been through. His compelling interview. You snorted your dog. Cocaine got all over her. So what do you do? You go snort the dog. That's tomorrow. Then on Thursday, a controversial issue. This woman was falsely accused. We are constantly blamed for being white. White privilege is a real thing. If we're going to change this, you've got to listen. That's Thursday. Then August, we're getting close now. You discover that he's lied about calling off the divorce. He tells you he's calling off the divorce. Your reaction to that? You're angry, hurt, you confronted him, he denied it, it's never resolved. It is just hangs in the air. Then we jump ahead a month to September. You discover a bunch of receipts. He's sending money to college girls between June and August for services unknown. You've got the receipts. So your response to that, when, when you find all this out, is you're shocked. We were separated at that point. You're angry, upset, cried, then argued with him, and it's never resolved, but you're shocked. Now, we're just a few days late, you discovered an email dated back to May to a female with explicit images. And we pulled some very tame images here, and your reaction to this is you kept this discovery a secret. You, you didn't even confront this. And then a few days later, you discover he's communicating with other women on a sugar baby daddy dating site looking for something fun, casual, and mutually beneficial. Your reaction here, you kept this discovery a secret, but you feel physically sick and heartbroken by the ages of these girls because they're very young. Now, you say there's a point at which you say, I'm not taking this. Where is that? That's why I'm here. Where is it? I'm, I'm old school, okay? I don't condone these. And when I say I'm shocked, I'm shocked because every single one of them is shocking and disheartening and devastating. But it's in between all of it that's leading me to think, I'm still gonna salvage my marriage somehow. He's still gonna get help for his addictions. He's still gonna surrender to this alcoholism and be the best for my daughter. He's telling me he wants to be a family. He just rented a 4,500 square foot home for our family and expects us to move this weekend. I, am, I have no idea what to do from this point on because I don't believe in divorce. I what, hate divorce. But what are you pretending not to know? If this is fixable, if he wants to be better, will he accept that he's an alcoholic, that he has all of these disorders that need to be confronted, or are we just gonna keep pretending like this is okay because we're so separated? Page two of this whole thing has been since I haven't lived in the home. 
Um, you've I, been, I've admitted to the issues on page one, but page two, we weren't even living in the same you've place. You've been living with me for the last two weeks, which is because when I got this. Because you asked me to come there I and did? help co-parent with our daughter because you went back to school. That doesn't even matter, Dustin. That's okay. a lie. That, that is the truth. You made the choice to stay in our home, to stay. I asked you to come help. I didn't say pack a bag and move all your stuff back in. That was your choice. It was your oh choice. Oh, my God. I, I'm... These images that she found, I can't show to the audience, but th these are very explicit images, right? Yes. And these are sent specifically, taken for and sent specifically to you, right? Those are of Dustin. 100%, I know your body. Those are your pictures. I don't think these are of him. Well, the other ones are of her sitting on him. We, we have... Sorry. We, we have some guidelines at CBS, and I mean, seriously, we can't even print those here. Okay. So I can't have them in the book, but, you know, I'm, gotcha. I'm saying these right. images are pretty graphic, and you understand what... And they get worse, is the point I was what, trying to make. That's the point I'm making. Now, Dustin's daughter, Taylor, says her father is a womanizer who paints the perfect Playboy image, and that all women should beware, including... Marcia, well, we're going to meet her next, uh, but I'm going to get to the bottom of your motivations here. We'll be right back. I think my dad's addicted to women. He likes to be young and date skinny 20-year-old little blondes. I hate cheaters and being lied to, and as long as he's that person, I want nothing to do with him. And later, he's delivering you divorce papers and leasing a house with you at the same time? I was just trying to figure out how to co-parent with our... That's insane! Taylor's chosen not to be involved with her dad, Dustin, for the last four months. I feel that Dustin has contributed to the broken relationship with his daughter, Taylor. Taylor does have a lot of past resentments that she holds against her dad. I think that Taylor sees all the hurt and destruction, and she's chosen not to have that in her life. I got a text message from Taylor saying that I was a horrible parent and that she didn't want to speak to me anymore and that she was done with me. I didn't really understand why she felt that way. I feel like Marcia has manipulated Taylor against me. Well, Marcia isn't the only woman in her husband Dustin's life that thinks he is a selfish, narcissistic playboy. He has a 21-year-old daughter, Taylor, and she admits to telling her father via a text message that she thinks that he is evil and that she's changing her last name. My dad has put everybody through so much hurt. He's a distrustful, disrespectful playboy. He needs to stop sleeping around and partying and be a parent to his two daughters. My entire life, my relationship with my dad has been a struggle. He claims that we've had a good relationship my whole life, but it must be in his fantasy world. My dad said some horrible things about me. He says that I'm psycho controlling and asks why somebody would want to be with me. I cut all ties because of what he's put myself, Marcia, and my little sister through. I hate cheaters and being lied to, and as long as he's that person, I want nothing to do with him. I think my dad's addicted to women. He likes to be young and date skinny 20-year-old little blondes. I wish I had warned Marcia about marrying my dad. I hoped that she would be the one to change him, but obviously I was wrong. I've told Marcia many times that she should just move on. My dad accuses Marcia of turning me against him. He can never take the blame for his own actions. He has all these people that love him, and he just takes advantage of them and screws them over. My dad has a long way to go. Well, let's clear this up straight up. Has Marcia poisoned your mind against your father? No. That is a total lie. She's been brought in on stuff that your own child shouldn't Dad, be brought in on. those are your actions. If you don't want me to know about it, don't do it. Okay, here's the thing. No. I can't do it. I, I are you not, Dad, you. answer me. Are you not embarrassed by this? You want me to see all of this? Really? Taylor, there's some things you need to just... Be a kid and not get into my marriage and all the stuff you've old. always done. You're very opinionated. You've always been opinionated. And I've always told you to be an independent young lady, and you are. I am. And I've never. And I feel like I owe that to my that. mom. You're not going to turn dad, on turn I'm this on her. I'm not turning on her. Be I love dad. my daughter. Be the dad. I love you too. And this that's is about why we're you. here. 
You hack my cell phone, get on all my hack stuff. It? You get on my cell phone, you've done it many a times. I know. Trying to me. get me fired from work, all the different okay, things that no, you've no, no, done. No, 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 no. Dr. It's, Phil. It's, out of control. This is the ridiculous I said I was done manipulative over five behavior months ago. That okay, I, am so I get tired it. Of. I get it. Then why are you still here? Can I say something about that? I want to say something about that. Dr. Phil. That's what I'm telling you. I, I am, here's what I'm concerned about. I have no doubt that this man has some personality problems here. I have no doubt that he has some maturity problems, that he does have an inability to get into and main, sustain a healthy relationship with women. That's an issue that he and I can and should talk about. My question for you is why your self-worth, why your self-esteem is so compromised that you're not only willing to accept that, yeah. but pursue it, plead to be allowed to stay. That's what you're doing. You're saying, abuse me, abuse yeah. my trust, violate every tenet of our relationship, our agreement as a husband and a wife. Do that to me, not once, not twice, but over and over and over again. Throw it in my face, wave it in my face, but please let me stay. No. Can I say something about that, Dr. Phil? No. Okay. That's what, that's what you're doing, and, and that tells me that, that you don't have a self-worth and a self-value that you need to have, that you should have. My love for my family and my love for him when I tried to help support <clears throat> him through his alcoholism all I heard, it was pounded in my head daily. This is why I did this. This is why I'm this way. This is why this has happened. I will never do that again. I'm sober now. This, this, this. Now he's not sober. And I'm stuck out here like, what the hell is going on? I've been fighting for my what family. What do you mean you're stuck out here like, what the hell is going on? Because why is it up to him what happens in your life? Why are you waiting for him to tell you what you're going to do with your life? I think the point I've been trying to make is... I think the point I'm trying to make is, where do you draw the line of for better, for worse, sickness, and in health? You draw I, it right here. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, because let me tell you, there are deal breakers in a relationship. I understand that. No, you don't. I do. Based on results, you do not understand that. I'm just telling you, this won't work. You were married. I understand that. You were, you I slept with that girl. So let's stop pretending like you were lonely. Like you slept with that girl and her little buddy. Like, I saw the pictures. Yet despite everything Marcia has discovered, I mean, it was pages up here, she actually wants to save her marriage. I, I know a lot about Dustin and his background, and I believe that he has within him the ability to lead his family. I believe he has the ability to be a good father for you. He would die for you. The question you should be asking is, will he live for you? And the answer to that is so far no. Because right now, he's trying to fill a cup that's got a hole in the bottom of it. Yeah. Let me just ask you a couple of common sense questions. What do you think about the nature, the character, and the quality of the girls on the other side of those transactions that are sending you that kind of picture? Obviously, I'm, I haven't done very well in the relationship game. It was just somebody to talk to. Like I said, I felt like I'd had a roommate for the two years. But either way, you were married. I understand that. Were, it I, doesn't matter. So let's stop pretending like you were lonely, like you slept with that girl and her little buddy. Like I saw <clears> the pictures. That's, that's an assumption. Okay, that's but not what's an your, assumption. Okay, yeah, that is okay, an assumption. Okay, but hold on. But let me, let me do, again, I want to get back to you. If, whether that's true or not, it, see, to me it doesn't matter whether that's true or not. If you believe that to be true, in what universe is that okay with it you? Is. I just found out. I just found that out last weekend. It's not okay at all. The, the time date, <laughs> the stamped date on that email made me want to vomit because I know exactly where I was, exactly what we were doing the day that he received that email. Vomit walking. Yeah, walking away. Dr. Phil, I get what you're saying, but as of 
like just like he's sitting here putting on this front like I'm obsessed with him and I I need to understand and get over it and move on to that just yesterday he's telling me I don't know this is all so confusing I just want to do what's best for my family you're what is referred to as a yeah but mindset sure. no matter what happens or what I say your response is yeah but yeah but you know he's got a problem with drinking because you have an agenda that you feel a desperate need to hold on to and what I'm trying to get through to you is you have turned your life over to him he's he comes and says okay we're gonna lease a house together to co-parent that is sick that's not what he said that is psychopathic it I mean is. the fact uh, uh, you're, it you're is. he's 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 delivering you divorce papers and leasing a house with you at the same time Lisa's in my name I was just trying to figure out how to co-parent with our two-year-old. But did you guys discuss living together in this house you're leasing? We did, yes. That's insane! Because he doesn't say that we're just going to co-parent. He spins it to me like we're going to work on our relationship. We're going to be friends again. We're going to see where this goes. We're going to hold Why our family together. Why is that together. okay with you? Let me tell you what's happening here. He is looking for a safety zone, a soft oh, place to that. fall. He wants his cake and eat it I too. Know I'm going to lease yeah. this house. You're going to move in there, and then I'm going to go out and chase these girls. But then Mama's going to be at home, so I can come home whenever I need to. Yeah, I, no, I, I want it. you there to keep the fires burning, and I can come home. I want my cake and eat it too. So I'll lease this house, and you move in, and we'll work on this. Yeah, we've been working on it. Right. You are so passive and desperate you put up with things and so that just pulls for more out of him and because you were that way then it just pulls for more out of you the two of you are the worst possible match in the configuration you're in right now yes. he does outrageous things you let him get away with it I'm not passive I would never use the word passive to describe no. my personality you make noise but you don't take action yeah. you're right Garcia wrote to me 12 times asking for my help to save her marriage. She claims she doesn't know how she can change anything, but I do. I'm going to tell them both what I think they need to do, and I I'm going to tell Taylor exactly what position I think she needs to take in all of this, because this is between them, but it sure splashes over onto her. We'll be right back. Avelyn deserves to have two great parents. She's this sweet baby and she's so innocent. Dustin should not have custody of Avelyn. I've told Marcia that Taylor and I would testify on her behalf against Dustin should he proceed with a custody battle. I feel like Dustin needs to stop worrying about the nightlife, the younger girls, the status, and focus more on raising his two-year-old daughter. I would like for Marcia to be my roommate and co-parent Avelyn together, but nothing more than that. Well, Dustin has no desire to salvage his marriage to Marcia, correct? That is correct. Today. Uh, It'll change. That doesn't match what you were saying just the other day. My message is not landing. It is. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, and so let me try this again. So you're getting mixed messages. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, absolutely. It's very manipulative. It puts you in a position of saying, well, I there's a glimmer of hope here and I take marriage so seriously well let me tell you what that looks like to me it looks like to me that you have taken a seat on the bench and you're waiting for him to tell you what's gonna happen in your life do you have to decide you know what I'm going to decide what happens in my life I got a life to live. She can't wait. You deserve so much better. My thing is I won't wait. I'm not doing it, and that's why we haven't had a relationship. Like, I deserve better from you. You deserve better. I love you, and you're my dad, and I always will have a soft spot for you, and that sucks. Because I'm tired of being disappointed and embarrassed and seeing you treat women terribly. And you know, you're talking to 19-year-olds. That's disgusting, and I'm disgusted by that reason I came to this show 
was because you told me you'd never speak to me again if I didn't come to the show. And that is why I came to the show, because I knew exactly what this was going to be. It was going to be a, all against me, and I understand that. I haven't, I haven't been a good husband, but it hurts to hear that I haven't been a good dad, because you weren't around when all this was going on. First off, let me say to you, love your father. I do. You don't have to love everything he does to love him. And trust me, if anything is going to inspire him to do better, it's probably you. <clears throat> you seem to be asking yourself, what am I looking for? What's it take to fill me up where I, you know, where I really feel fulfilled? Because you're looking for something. And I, I think you need to go through some real self-examination. And I, I'm willing to arrange that for you if, if you're willing to do it. Not marital therapy. I'm saying you need to have the opportunity to really examine yourself and find out what you need to do so you can look in the mirror and really be fulfilled and be proud of who you are. Absolutely. And if I make those arrangements, will you do it? I will do it. And I'll handpick somebody that gets it. Somebody that understands. I will do that. That's All right. Co-parenting and my daughters are very important to me, so. And those are the things that need to be focused on. You need to accept the fact that this situation is simply not going to be healthy and you don't want yourself or this daughter growing up in this toxic relationship. You simply don't. I do not. Okay. I'm going to make arrangements for everybody here to have the help that they need to make the adjustments necessary going forward. And I'm going to put that in place immediately. Not like a month from now, but immediately. Okay? All right, fair enough. All right, coming up, a dynamic duo and two friends of mine who say they can help you look red carpet ready. We're going to meet Dr. Terry and Heather Dubrow next. Well, you know my next two guests from... E's Botched, and from Bravo TV's The Real Housewives of Orange County. But what you may not know is before the fame and success, Dr. Terry Dubrow and his wife Heather struggled for years with their weight. They say they've tried every fad diet book, and when none of them worked, they decided to write their own. Dr. Terry and Heather have joined us to share their exciting discoveries and details about their new book, the Dubrow Diet. Take a look. I'm Heather Dubrow. And I'm Dr. Terry Dubrow. You might recognize us from Real Housewives of Orange County. Or botched. But we are coming out with our new book, The Dubrow Diet. Terry and I are thrilled. We started talking about the way we've been eating and exercising the last three or four years. And we said, okay, let's write it down and let's share it with the world. This book is a game changer in diet and healthy lifestyle that's based on real science. Terry talks about science and I talk about how to use it in everyday life. The book is based on what we call interval eating, where you learn how to eat in particular timed intervals. Diet's a dirty word. This this is a lifestyle plan. Let's be honest, I'm the plastic surgeon. I don't want you to have dangerous plastic surgery. I want to give you a natural way to feel better, to look better, and to obtain your ideal body weight. The incredible thing about the Debro diet is that it's really sustainable. Be prepared, meal prep, and you will stay in control. The results are amazing. Well, guys, it's good to see you. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited about this. This brand new book, which is, by the way, in bookstores, and it is published by my son Jay's company, uh, is based on the concept of interval eating. Tell me what you mean by that specifically. So this is based on actually Nobel Prize winning discovery that if you know how to eat in certain timed intervals, you will on a daily basis preferentially break down your fat 
in a very rapid way and you will send your body physiologically into an anti-aging state known as autophagy where your cells go into a state where they rapidly renew themselves, they break down toxins and during this diet your skin will tighten, your hair will be better and your focus will be better. Your you had brain to bring up hair, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up. How cute is my husband? He always talks this incredible science, and I understand like a third of it. So <laughs> if I could just break it down, if I told you that I could give you a lifestyle plan that you could actually, for once, really lose all the weight in a way that is totally obtainable, sustainable, and not only are you going to look your best, but you're going to have energy. <clears throat> your brain fog is going to be gone, and it's going to have all these incredible anti-aging properties. Wouldn't you try it? Nah. <laughs> well, let me tell you why I, why I, uh, listen, I've read the book, and congratulations on a, a really good job, by the way, and this brain fog that you're talking about, Heather, is so real, I can't even tell you, because if you get in that state, it's like everything slows down, and you're kind of, everything is fuzzy, and when it clears, Truly, it's like a fog lifts. And for me personally, there was a period of time where I was trying to buy supplements to clear it up, and yeah. nothing worked until I started eating like this. Yeah. Now, and now I've, I've talked to some of the people that have been involved in the test group and all with this, and the, one of the things that impacted me is not one person said they were ever hungry. One minute of one hour on this diet. Never were they hungry, so they didn't feel like they were making sacrifices. That's the amazing part about this diet. If you get past the initial slightly challenging phase, which we're gonna go through the phases, and we're right. gonna tell you how to get through it very painlessly, suddenly you have no appetite. You are in control of your appetite rather than your appetite right. being in control of you. Right. The amazing results of the Debro diet when we come back. Here's just an example of how it has worked for those that have tried it out. Now, Armando's weight loss on the Debro diet, 60.4 pounds, okay? Now, all right, now I want to add Samantha to the conversation because she lost an amazing 50 pounds uh, on the Debro diet. Samantha's right here. So what's been your experience? It's so easy. It's you know, you get for, through the first three days and then that's your life. That's, you're not hungry. This is a body makeover. This isn't that, just... Yeah, that was uh, six, seven weeks postpartum. Right. And then this was about four days ago. <laughs> After right. my vacation at the lake for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me ask you a question. So sometimes when you lose a lot of weight, and I know this is a plastic surgeon, it leaves your skin lax all over your body. This diet has a component to it where your skin can potentially actually tighten. I've had two kids and my stomach is not saggy. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Now, there are three phases uh, to this diet that you were talking about. Now, phase one, uh, red carpet ready. Talk about that. We call it red carpet ready because, you know, when we have a special event coming up, we need that little extra push yeah. right before to fit into that dress. That's the red carpet ready, which is going to be the most limited food list. Right. Um, and then we move to phase two, and that's only two to five days. Right. And then we go to phase two, summer is coming, and that's really the plan that's going to take you to your goal weight. Right. And that has a more extensive list. We add alcohol back into the list, thank goodness, especially for parents. And then <laughs> we get to phase three, which is look hot while living like a human. Yeah. Because we want to give you a plan for your life. All diets work in the beginning, but then you attenuate to them, you habituate, yeah. you get used to them and you get bored and then you fall off the wagon. This diet actually allows you to cheat at certain points during the diet so you don't feel like you're missing out, so that your cells don't sort of get bored. But you, it's, a, it's a lifestyle that you can continue for the rest of your life. And yeah. you can fall back into phase two if suddenly you have gained a little weight. Right. And you want to go back to the summer is coming and lose a little more. Yeah. So it's really a science-based diet that works. And anybody who's been on it will tell you, you have no appetite during yeah. this diet. This is going to be a huge, huge success. I can tell you, I've read it. It is very understandable. It is very doable. And it's really a lot of fun, particularly if you get a group of you doing it together. That's where you really help each other. You get like-minded people around, 
as a support system. Yep. So do that. Read it together. Do it together. And we want to hear from you about it as well. Look, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Dr. Terry Dubrow and his wife, Heather. Uh, their new book, The Dubrow Diet, is now available everywhere books are sold. And by the way, everybody in the audience is going home with a copy. And don't forget to catch Dr. Terry on new episodes of Botched coming soon on E! For more information, log on to drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.